Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Does Science. This video is about the action of the position and momentum operators on wave functions. When you first learn about wave functions, one of the first things you learn is that the action of the position operator is such that it multiplies a wave function by x. And this sort of makes sense. The next thing you learn is that the action of the momentum operator acts by calculating the derivative of a wave function. And this does not always make that much sense. What I want to do in this video is pretty straightforward. I want to show you that yes, the position operator acts on wave functions by multiplying them by x, and the momentum operator acts on wave functions by calculating their derivative. So let's go. To study the action of the position and momentum operators on wave functions, let's start by reminding ourselves of the most important property of these two operators, which is the fact that their commutator is equal to i h bar. Because wave functions are defined as the representation of a state vector in the bases spanned by the eigenkets of the position operator, then the action of the position operator on wave functions is trivial. To see that, let's consider the eigenvalue equation for the position operator, x hat acting on the ket x is equal to the eigenvalue x acting on the ket x. We then write an arbitrary state psi, and we consider its representation in the position basis, and to do that we calculate the bracket of psi with x, which gives us the wave function psi of x. To see how the position operator acts on wave functions, we start by constructing the ket psi prime, which is equal to the ket formed by the action of the position operator on the ket psi. The next step is to see what the ket psi prime looks like in the position representation, so we calculate the bracket between x and psi prime, which gives us x x hat psi, then we recognize that the action of x hat on the bra x is equal to the eigenvalue x times the bra x because the x hat operator is a Hermitian operator. And putting this together, we obtain x and then the bracket between x and psi, which we recognize as the wave function. So we can write the whole thing as equal to x multiplying the wave function psi of x. What does this result imply? It's telling us that the action of the position operator on a state psi in terms of wave functions is simply multiplying the wave function psi of x by x. We can repeat the very same exercise for the momentum operator in the basis spanned by its own eigenkets. So we start by considering again an arbitrary ket psi, and we write it down in the momentum basis as the bracket between p and psi, which gives us the momentum space wave function psi bar of p. We then define a new ket psi prime, in this case being formed by the action of the momentum operator on the ket psi, and now we seek again what the ket psi prime looks like in the momentum representation. To do that, let me project the ket psi prime on p. To then obtain p p hat psi, we then recognize the action of p hat on the bra p as simply giving the eigenvalue p times the bra p because p is a Hermitian operator, and then we obtain p and the bracket between p and psi. We recognize this bracket as psi bar of p, and we can write the whole thing as equal to p multiplying psi bar of p. So what have we learned? We see that acting with the position operator x hat on a ket psi is equivalent to multiplying by x a wave function psi of x if we work in the position representation. Likewise, acting with the momentum operator p hat on a ket psi is equivalent to multiplying by p the momentum space wave function psi bar of p if we work in the momentum representation. So perhaps unsurprisingly we have seen that the action of the position operator, when written in its own basis, is rather simple, and the action of the momentum operator, when written in its own basis, is also rather simple. In the rest of this video we will consider the much harder question of what happens when I act with the momentum operator and I want to describe that action in the basis of the position operator or vice versa. What happens when I act with the position operator and I want to represent that action in the basis spanned by the momentum eigenkets. Let's start by considering the action of the momentum operator in the position basis, which means that we have to consider wave functions psi of x. To show this, we will need to use some of the properties of the translation operator. If you need a refresher about translation operator, you can find the link in the description to a whole video on that, but all I will do here is to quote the relevant results from that video. A translation by an amount alpha is described by a translation operator t alpha, which is equal to e to the minus i alpha p over h bar, 
an infinitesimal translation by minus epsilon is given by e to the i epsilon p over h bar, which we can tailor expand to obtain 1 plus i epsilon over h bar p plus a term of order epsilon squared. Another result we need is that the action of the translation by alpha on a ket x is equal to another ket x plus alpha, in that the corresponding expression in dual space is such that the bra x translation operator alpha is equal to the bra x minus alpha. With these two results we're now ready to start, so we again consider a ket psi, and we write it down in the position representation as x psi equals the wave function psi of x, and then we consider a second ket psi prime, which in this case is given by the action of the momentum operator on the ket psi, and what we want to know is what does this new ket psi prime looks like in the position representation, so we need to calculate x p hat psi. This is where the translation operator comes in, and we consider the bracket x t minus epsilon psi. We then use the action of the translation operator on bras to write this down as the bracket between x plus epsilon and psi, and then we recognize this as the wave function psi of x plus epsilon. The next step is to repeat the same calculation, x t minus epsilon psi, but now using the Taylor expansion of the translation operator, so we write x, and then 1 plus i epsilon over h bar p plus a term of order epsilon squared psi, and putting this together we obtain x psi plus i epsilon over h bar x p hat psi plus a term of order epsilon squared. In this final expression, x psi is simply the wave function psi of x. We now recognize that the term here, x p hat psi, is precisely the term we need above, and we can therefore rearrange these two expressions we have found in order to write down that x p hat psi is equal to minus i h bar, and then we take the limit of epsilon going to zero of psi at x plus epsilon minus psi of x all divided by epsilon, and then recognizing that the limit is simply the definition of a derivative, we can write the whole thing as minus i h bar and derivative with respect to x of psi of x. So what does this mean? What we have found is that the action of the momentum operator p hat on a state psi, when written in the position representation, is such that the momentum operator calculates the derivative of the wave function and then multiplies the result by minus i h bar. What we found earlier was that the action of the position operator in the position representation was simply multiplying the wave function by x, and what we have found now is that the action of the momentum operator in the position representation is somewhat more complicated, it calculates the derivative of the wave function. We can now ask the converse question, what happens when we act with the position operator in the momentum basis? To prove that we will use the fact that the momentum space wave function is related to the real space wave function by a Fourier transform as written down here, and if you need a reminder about this, do check the video linked in the description. We start by defining a ket psi prime as equal to the action of the position operator on another ket psi. We then write these two kets in both momentum and position representations, so psi bar prime of p is equal to p psi prime, psi bar of p is equal to p psi, psi prime of x is equal to x psi prime, and psi of x is equal to x psi. To understand how the position operator acts in momentum space, we need to be able to write psi bar prime of p in terms of psi bar of p. To get started, we write psi bar prime of p, we then use the Fourier transform relation above to set this equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi h bar, integral over dx, e to the minus i p x over h bar, psi prime of x. We know from the beginning of this video that psi prime of x is simply equal to x times psi of x, because the position operator acts by multiplying by x in the position representation. We can therefore write the whole thing as equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi h bar integral over dx e to the minus i p x over h bar x times psi of x. To make progress, let me calculate the derivative with respect to p of e to the minus i p x over h bar psi of x, and to calculate this derivative all we need to note is that in this expression the only term that depends on p is the exponential, so we can write the whole thing as equal to minus i x over h bar e to the minus i p x over h bar times psi of x. We then note that the three terms here, x, the exponential and psi of x, 
are precisely the three terms that we have in the integrand above, x the exponential and psi of x. This tells us we can rewrite psi bar prime of p as equal to i h bar d d p of 1 over square root of 2 pi h bar integral over dx e to the minus i p x over h bar psi of x, where we can take the derivative with respect to p outside of the integral because the integral is over x. The last step is to realize that the term in square brackets is simply the Fourier transform written above, so it is equal to psi bar of p, and we can write the whole thing as equal to i h bar and the derivative with respect to p of psi bar p. So what do we learn from this? We have that psi bar prime of p is simply the momentum space representation of the state psi prime, which is the state obtained by acting with the position operator on a state psi. And what we can see is that this action in the momentum representation is simply equivalent to differentiating the momentum wave function with respect to momentum. Putting everything together tells us that in the momentum representation, the action of the momentum operator is pretty straightforward, it simply multiplies the momentum wave function by p, but the action of the position operator is more involved because it requires the calculation of the derivative with respect to p of the momentum wave function. Before concluding, I want to generalize these results to three dimensions. So we start with the position representation, where the wave function psi of r is equal to the projection of psi on r, and in the position representation the action of the position operator simply multiplies the wave function by r, whereas the action of the momentum operator is such that it calculates the gradient of the wave function with respect to r. The same thing carries through in the momentum representation, where the momentum wave function psi bar of p is equal to the projection of the state psi on the basis p, the action of the position operator calculates the gradient of the wave function with respect to p, and the action of the momentum operator simply multiplies the wave function by p. To summarize, we have considered the position and momentum operators and their commutator, which is equal to i h bar, and we have looked at the representations associated with the eigenkets x and p of these two operators. State psi in the position representation is given by the wave function psi of x, which is obtained by projecting the state psi onto the basis state x, and the action of the position operator x hat in the position representation simply multiplies the wave function by x, whereas the action of the momentum operator in the position representation calculates the derivative of the wave function with respect to x and multiplies the result by minus i h bar. The results in the momentum representation are in a sense complementary to those in the position representation, so the wave function is psi bar of p, which is the projection of the state psi onto the basis ket p. The action of the position operator is such that it calculates the derivative of the wave function with respect to p and then multiplies the result by i h bar, and the action of the momentum operator is simply multiplicative. The results we have obtained in this video show that although the representations of quantum states in different bases are entirely equivalent, the mathematical representation of these states and of the operators that act on these states are different between different representations, and the common theme when solving quantum mechanical problems is to find the best representation that makes the mathematics as easy as possible. So what have we learned? We have learned about the action of the position and momentum operators on wave functions. We can now solve many quantum mechanical problems in the wave mechanics formulation. Problems that we can solve using this formulation include potential barriers and potential wells, as well as the hydrogen atom. If you liked the video, please subscribe.